Hello and welcome to Manga Video Podcast Episode 4. You'll notice that I wrote cast in not bubble letters because I got I got, got bored of writing the word cast. How are you doing, Yazuki Wolf? I'm doing good. How what are you drawing? Um, just doodling. Is this kind your little character for your for your manga that we're you're going to be drawing in our project? Yes and no, because it's in the same vein as the character I'm going to draw for our project, but uh, this actually isn't the same character. Just oh, right, of, okay. Yeah. So, Yasuki Wolf, you actually get to choose today's theme. Yay! So what is today's theme, and how does it work? Okay, so last time we were talking about the importance of using reference, and how to kind of base your fantasy fr- out of reality. Ooh. So, as a sort of kind of interesting uh, challenge for today, yes. Yes. I gathered a whole bunch of free, copyright-free images from, from okay. the internet, and I put oh, them yeah. all on separate layers in this document. Uh, and okay. I'm going to have you pick a random number Uh-oh. between 1 and 10. Okay. And we're going to do that six times to get six different photo references. Okay. And then our challenge is then to make a drawing within 20 minutes or so using at least three of those six images as reference. Oh. Okay. So it could be a little challenging depending on what comes up, um, but uh, it's pretty free-formed. It doesn't have to, you don't have to limit yourself to those images, so it could be okay. something of your own imagination plus those images, or it could just be a combination of those images, anything you want. Um, ideally, you don't want to just draw the image like a still life. You want it to be a little bit more creative than that, but yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Okay, well, let's choose the pictures then. Give me a number between 1 and 10. A number between 1 and 10. All right, let's ask the viewers. What do you guys think? Oh. Yeah, this is where yeah, it would be... That doesn't work that way, does it? <laughs> if it was a live stream, this would be, that would be a good place to ask the viewers. But uh... we, will, we will move into live streaming in the future. I guess yes. today I'll just have to imagine what the viewers asked for. Yep. I'm guessing that they wanted the, one, the number seven. A drop of water. A drop of water. That's yep. no ordinary drop of water. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a spanky drop of water. Yep. S- spanky. Fall, falling... I, why did I say spanky? That's just a... A cool looking drop of yeah, water. I, I'm not exactly sure what the adjective spanky would be describing in this image. Yeah, I'm not really even <laughs> sure if spanky is a word, but it, uh, it is now. It is now, yes. Okay, yep. so that was seven. The next right. number is yep. three. All right, so now we have an iguana. An iguana. Jeez! <laughs> that's huge! <laughs> but, um, yeah, I have to I guess resize so it. It is to scale with the, the drop of water. <laughs> that is true, yes. <laughs> Don't worry, it will be re- resized in a moment. Uh, <laughs> that's huge. Uh, give me one second just to rasterize this. Rasterize, yeah. such a cool, le- such a cool word. It sounds yeah. like something uh, out of Transformers. Yeah, like I, I will say it like three or four times, even though I don't need to, just because it's yeah. fun to say. It is fun to say. Right. So now that I've finished rasterizing that image, uh, <laughs> what's the what's the next number? The next number is six. Six. A uh, ladybug. A ladybug. Yep. Wow, these are naturish uh, images. Yep. I- I'm gonna have trouble. <laughs> I feel like I I, I, don't, I like avoid drawing nature at all costs. You're not in the organic side of things. Oh no, no, I'm I, I very. I should have some cybernetics in here too. Yeah, yeah. I'm super super digital. Yep. Let's hope I let's hope I choose a digital one. Next number is yep two, two. Okay, we got a bumblebee. Not quite digital yet. Whoa, that's is that a bumblebee? This is also to scale. If Mate, that scale was opposite to reality. That is like the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. <laughs> or actually, is this a? I think it's actually a wasp. Maybe maybe not a bumblebee. I think it's actually a wasp. It looks kind of waspy, doesn't it? Not yep. that I've ever seen one that close, and hopefully I never will have to. Yep. That is huge. Okay, so well, you may want a, a a large number in order to get away from the nature stuff because oh, right, okay. I didn't have a no, a chance to like shuffle, so they're kind of in okay. related to each other. Okay. There. The next number is 10. 10. Okay, 1 2 3 let's, 4 5 let's hope you were, 6 7 Let's, let's eight, see if Yazuki nine, Wolf was trolling ten. me and he's just given me like the most it's like a picture of Godzilla <laughs> or something. Raspberries. Okay, okay, I can handle that. I can handle <laughs> raspberries. The next number is Rasterized. Ready or not? Yep. 8. Eight. Okay, one, two, three, four. I think I just got way too much nature in here. I don't know. But what? There's a tiger. <laughs> what? That's violent. I remember next time to put more, uh, more high-tech gadget. gadget no, no. Honestly, the... it's fine. I think, and I'm, I'm sure we'll. I'll find a way to 
high tech gadgetize it no matter what. Yeah, and that that is doable because you that it, is doable. If you use the uh, ti- say a tiger for reference and make a cybernetic tiger, that's still part of you're still <laughs> using reference. So <laughs> cool. So we're gonna move into the poses now. So we'll say let's get maybe three poses and then that'll be it. Okay. Uh, what numbers do I use? One to ten again. I'll say one to f- five. One to five. Okay. Um, three. Okay. One, two, three. Is this a person? Oh, yeah, okay, that works. There we go. This actually wasn't from Pose Maniacs, <laughs> but it's still a person. <gasps> what a pose. <laughs> Crikey. Uh, okay. <laughs> wasn't expecting that. Um, <laughs> next Next one is four. One, two, three, four. I think yeah. I may need to... You, you may need to tell me what the... Okay, I can, I can handle poses like that. I think number one. Okay, one, all right. All and, right. And once wow. again, you only have to use three, so if you don't want to use one of these poses and want to make your own pose, that's fine as well. All right, so Yasuki Wolf has sent me the nine images. I've got the iguana, the thing that might be a wasp, the tiger, the poses. <laughs> and let me get this straight. I have to use at least three of these pictures as reference in my drawing. Yes, and the key phrase there is as reference, so that doesn't mean you have to actually draw the image, it means you just have to use something from the image in as a reference for whatever you're drawing. Okay, so just as reference. Yes. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, how much time do we have for this? I'll set my timer. Uh, 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. Are you ready? Yes. Ready, set, start. All right. All right. Okay, so so here we go. By the way, viewers, I cannot see what Yazuki Wolf is drawing. Oh, no, I can. Oh, you can't? left the screen on, but... There you go. Now you can't see. Yeah, we're sorry. uh, (laughs) (laughs) We almost screwed that up. Yep. So I will not be able to see what Yazuki Wolf is drawing, but he cannot see what I'm drawing, and then after 20 minutes, we will reconvene and show our pictures to each other. So for now, I'm getting my pencil out, and let's see... Are we, are we allowed to talk about what we are incorporating, or is that not the point? Um, yeah, sure, you could, we could talk about it. I guess I guess all that matters is that you can't see the picture, and then we'll, we'll share yeah. that at the end. Right. I'm not really sure what to do with this. I mean, <laughs> I've, got, I've, got these, I've got these poses here that I could use. Oh, by the way, what's our talking topic, by the way? Are we going to talk about these, these reference images, or have we got a topic today? Uh, we do have a topic. Um, what, what is our topic? So... I wanted to talk about the issue of pause because I can't remember what it was called. Option, option paralysis. Option yes. paralysis. I want to talk about the issue of option paralysis. Oh right, okay. And what is the what is the main thing with option paralysis for you? I yeah. mean, what do you what 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 do you have too many options of? Yeah, so I think that this probably would mean different things to different people, and mm. I think I, I heard this for the I heard that word the first time from you actually I believe. Um, oh right, oh right. So it's right. <laughs> like I forgot when it was, but uh, and I, I the moment I heard it, I already knew what it was. I was like, oh yes, I know exactly what you mean. Even though yeah. that was the first time I heard the word, so I imagine a lot of our viewers too would already kind of imagine what what that could mean. But mm. um, for me, it's it lately it's just been that um, I've been feeling especially inspired in a way of just finding so many things that I want to do that I want to create mm. um, and that that felt really good at first <laughs> but then after a while when I want to actually get cracking and start doing this stuff I find that there's just so many options that I'm not really progressing the way I'd like to and not and I find myself not really knowing where to start at all ah uh, yeah I definitely I definitely feel the same and especially because as the viewers, as viewers of the, this podcast may have heard before, Wolf and I are working on a manga project now, on on trying to sell manga in Japan, mm-hmm. and for that I'm I'm I have a, I feel a lot of stress, like I have to make literally the best manga ever drawn or something, and I'm finding it really difficult to nail down what I think is going to be something that people will buy, and I'm especially thinking, what are Japanese people going to want to buy, especially from a foreigner, like. Yeah. Are they going to be expecting a foreign style, and should I go with that? Or, I mean, I probably can't because I don't really, I don't, I never, I've never really drawn in an, in anything other than you know my influences, which is mostly Japanese stuff. Right. So that actually would be pretty close to what people want, then maybe. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. But then who knows? Maybe people who come up to the table will be hoping to see more, more foreign stuff. By the way, we've got 16 minutes and 45 seconds. Ah! Damn, that was a lot faster than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I'm wondering if I, I mean, I've kind of put some of this pose together. I wonder if I can, I can just keep working on it. So what specifically are your options, do you think, that are getting to you? Is it yeah. is it mostly to do with your endeavours or mostly to do with art? Well, okay, so um, recently I decided to start learning how to do Unity. And yeah. uh, um, for those who don't know, Unity is a software for making video games. Yeah. And um, so before that, I, I always kind of, I've always been really interested in making making my own games. You know, I'm working now in a game company, but yeah. um, the whole idea of programming just seemed so difficult and far away so that I, I kind of gave up before even trying. And oh, really? Okay. In a way, that kind of made it made me kind of focus mostly on just art, and um, also I did some tabletop gaming, so like paper, paper, uh, paper, paper and pencil. Uh, role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and so forth. So but, actually uh, thinking that programming was too difficult was what gave you the focus to yes. <laughs> get you where you are today. <laughs> right, exactly. So in a way that was a good thing. But uh, then recently I, just, I, just, I started trying to learn Unity because I just kind of wanted to increase my, uh, my skill set. And I found that it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Um, if, uh, especially like I, I mentioned earlier that I did a lot of like Dungeons and Dragons um, Role playing, like game, deep dungeon mastering, and I actually made my own my own rule set and everything. And a lot of it is actually kind of similar in terms of like just using mathematical formulas to, right, to translate yeah. into whatever. So it that kind of opened up this whole new arena where this all these types of things that I didn't think I could even do before. Now all all of a sudden it seemed like hey. I could do this, you know. I, uh, I have this idea for an app that I want to make. I could well, probably I mean, program that myself, you know. Was it specifically with gaming as well? I think when people get into programming, they yep. start to realize how game development involves so many skills other than just programming. Right. That just the the nature of doing programming has probably opened your eyes to how 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 good you are at just learning new skills in general. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, because that's the next thing is not only the programming, but also just because of that. All the other things that I used to think, oh well, I couldn't do that. Now it's like, well, maybe I could, you know. So it's like, um, I, I've been playing Skyrim recently, mm. and there's a big modding community for Skyrim and people that just make their own mods for the game. And oh, you get tempted to make your own. Yeah. So at first, <laughs> I was I was just having so much fun downloading everyone else's mods and uh, making like my custom game as a mixture of everyone else's mods. Then I noticed, hey, I kind of would like this mod to exist, but I don't see it. I bet uh, I can make that mod. Ah, you know? uh, it's a slippery slope, man. This is right. this is how it starts. Yep. So there's game. There's like games I want to try to try design in Unity. Uh, program in Unity. There's um my whole my whole little world that I want to make illust like an illustration. There's the comic that we're working on with uh, with our with our other project. Uh, yeah. And then then there's Skyrim modding. And then now I I bought VR, so I'm getting into VR a lot. And <laughs> it's like there's just so much stuff to do and so many things to experience in every on every any given moment, right? Yeah. Well, here's something that I found my life kind of equalized by itself yeah and that I, I still I still have a lot of things that I want to do if anyone has ever watched my channel they'll know that I'm into yo-yoing <laughs> they'll oh, know yeah, that yeah. I'm into music which is what I studied the most at university mm -hmm. but also I'm into programming which I haven't done on the channel yet but that's something that I'm thinking of doing in the future hmm. and and what I'd like to get to the point is that actually having a YouTube channel can help you get a lot of things out of your system <laughs> right right and in a way it, it, it's like if you if you set programming and learning programming as the goal mm -hmm. then it's it's quite difficult to ever stop it's like mm. every day you get home and you just do tutorials and it's never ending and you you never ever finish the task of getting good at right. programming yeah but if you have a channel or even not even just a channel if you have a place to output things that you've done projects yep. mm -hmm. then you get into a habit of what's the word feeling the satisfaction of, of finishing projects and getting things out there yeah so you feel more productive than maybe you even are being hmm. and and yeah I mean I guess I guess what I'm saying is it's a it's one way of getting your, yourself to stop <laughs> yeah stop things because game development you could you could never draw again and dedicate yourself to game dev for the rest of your life 
Oh yeah, definitely. And you'd yeah. still you'd still not even have enough time for that. Right. So I get I guess with option paralysis in terms of hobbies, it's more a case of isn't it just knowing when to stop? Like where is your where is your your end point? Your the cutoff point for you. Oh, so when when to kind of move on to the next project, I guess. Yeah, well, I think, okay, for example, the, the easiest one for me to use an example now is skateboarding, because yep. that's my, like, newest hobby. Mm -hmm. But because my goal is not to become a pro skateboarder, or rather, I know how hard it would be to become a pro skateboarder, yeah. that I'm not going to dedicate six hours of my day to it, right. because you know, that's I would have to dedicate at least six hours a day of, of day of my time to it if I wanted to become, you know, quite professional quite quickly. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure that it would it would take even longer than that, but right now I'm I'm satisfied with leaving it at one hour a day at most, hmm. and there and are days where I still I still go without skateboarding at all actually. So you you said that it was a matter of, of figuring out when you wanted to stop. So it sounds like it sounds to me like you're saying one hour a day. That's kind of limiting how much time you're going to devote to it. But uh, are are you planning to stop at some point or? Oh, just... I'm not, it's not that I'm going to... No, sorry, when I say stop, I don't mean quit and not do it anymore. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm talking about just daily daily time constraint. Like, right. how much time am I going to dedicate to it each day? Yeah, how much of a priority do you want, want it to be in your life, basically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard to say, though. I mean, for me, more than hobbies, the real issue has been paralysis of what to, what to write for my manga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is definitely a tough a tough part. Um, I, I've yeah. also been struggling with that. I I, I came up with uh, some ideas and um, probably like talk talk to you about it a, l a little bit later. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I started looking at it and I think part of the um, nature of how dramas are nowadays, like of Game of Thrones and uh, like Breaking Bad and all these types of dramas, I I I I, ha I find it hard to make a very condensed condensed uh, story. Like, I, yeah. I, I keep finding that it, it seems like a good like opening, but then there's no actual like ending to it. Yeah, but I I really now that we have just been to Comitia, which is yep. an independent comic event for viewers who aren't familiar with it. Yep. Now I know how important it is to sell a product which is self-contained. Right. Because I think it's it's not really fair to expect people who have never seen you before to to buy you know, two issues or three issues of something, like, it's only really fair to expect them to buy one one issue of something that you've got. Right. And then so, if that's good, maybe they'll come back and ask for more. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Possibly. And oh, that's the same dear. thing for people if they're trying to get published or something, uh, publishers as well, that they, they want to see a fully condensed uh, story. Um, oh, really? Yeah, they, they don't, they don't want to see, like, oh, this is a this is a good first episode to some grand uh, series. They want to see that you know how to tell a story, like, beginning, middle, and end, end before they would be interested in... Oh, uh, that's interesting. Well, then, in, in a way... Yep. Yeah, that's... That's really interesting. I, I, I Because all my ideas end yep. up being, you know, the starts of really long series. Right. Like, I'm like, oh, in a, it's in a world where this is the case and everyone's been forbidden from doing this one thing, but then someone figures out how to do it or something, and then, like, I, I can't figure out how to end it in one episode. But you, well, if, if you it's... Can still, if, you can still have it be part of, like, a, a bigger story, but it has to have a, an actual, like, beginning, middle, and end, so there has to be some type of, like, uh, objection, um, not, not, not objection, objective that's, yeah. uh, that's accomplished. So it can't be, like... So, like, my problem with my story is I think I, was, I ended up, when I was... When I was uh, coming up with it, about after about like forty pages, it just it starts off where you, after forty pages you finally find out who the main villain is or something or who, who <laughs> a villain is. Like there's no uh, villain up until the first until forty pages in, and that, that that doesn't work because there's no nothing to actually like be a victory for that first episode, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think I think for me, yeah, I'm I think of when I think of all my favorite manga, the first pages are so much of it is just set up for yeah. this huge sprawling epic yeah <laughs> but i have to find a way to also incorporate a, you know a story the problem for me with short manga yeah and i've actually taken part in a contest in england hmm. where you have to draw an eight page comic hmm. and yeah that's really hard it, it, yeah it's not only just hard but it really it kind of prescribes the type of story that ends up getting written 
Yeah, yeah, because like, yeah, you, you have you can't do a lot yeah. of things with only eight pages. Yeah, the, it almost always ends up being a story where, you know, it doesn't really matter who the characters are. Like the ideal right. story for a competition like that is a story where people don't speak and mm -hmm. no one has a name. It's mostly about giant ideas and just characters that represent all of their their category. So like you have the character you have a character that represents all adults and a character that represents all children. You don't have specific I don't know. Like are just archetypes basically. Yeah, I just feel like too much characterization just begs more questions, right? Like right. once you give a character a name, then it's just like, oh why? And then who 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 where does that name come from and whose family lineage is it and you know, is that person gonna come back and I don't know, it's just right. <laughs> just brings more questions to the table that need to be answered. Yeah. I know. I, I feel like I'm I'm complaining a lot, but really it is actually good practice. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I think I'm just making excuses for the fact that I can't do it. <laughs> so what other kind of advice would you have to deal with uh, option paralysis? Uh, like um like I guess for me to to go to go on from what you said about uh, knowing when to stop and how YouTube is helping you with that. I think a lot of a thing that helps me is to write down everything that I want to do. And okay. then give a priority to each one to no. figure out which one's the highest priority and which one's lowest. No, you don't like that's, that. No, no, I, I, no, I, I think that's exactly what needs to be done. But I, I would never bring myself to do it. <laughs> oh yeah, well, it's like it's you know, all like, equal. It's all the same priority. Yeah, it's they're all important. And and here's the thing about me as well is I think, in my brain, yep. I will find some way to convince myself that I'm superhuman, yep. and that maybe if it's me. I can I can do all of them. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you can. Like, so when I say priority, well, I don't no, mean I, I don't mean priority in terms of uh, of which ones you're gonna do and which ones you're gonna give up. What I mean more is like, say, think of uh, how many hours do I want to spend on each of these a week. So, oh, or, yeah. or maybe start with how many how many days do I want to work on this per week. So, like, maybe I only need to work on my Japanese um, three times a week, and then maybe I only need to do. Um, like unit studying Unity tutorials uh, twice a week or something, and then you, after that you figure out how many hours you want to invest to each thing, and after that you kind of start just getting a schedule. And I find that for me, if you have a schedule, it helps because I mean I, I know a lot of people are gonna try to want to avoid schedules, but um, what what it c does for me is that e even if you're not working on something right now, like so, if you know that there's a slot of time in which you're going to be able to work on everything eventually. It kind of helps you just be like, okay, well, I'm focused on on uh, drawing today, and the next the the comic will I'm going to work on that tomorrow, so I don't have to worry about that right now. So I can kind of like save that energy for tomorrow, you know. I mean, that's a really good idea. Yeah, absolutely. And and I as much as I hate coming up with a a timetable, yeah. every time I have in in my life, it has my life has been better. <laughs> yeah, and I've actually achieved more. Mm -hmm. as much as I, I hate to admit, to admit it. it. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I think a lot think of people some, don't like that so much. <laughs> so. Yeah, something that's difficult for me is just dealing with the idea. Yeah, I just can't handle I just can't help. It just, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies, if, yeah. if that is a, a term. Yeah. Calendars. By the way, I haven't yeah. been looking at the clock, but no, don't look it says clock. we have 3 minutes and 12 seconds left. Damn it. I'm like nowhere even close to being finished. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I'm yeah. not. I... I don't even know what I've drawn. Essentially, what I, I did was I took one of the poses. Yep. You'll see in a minute, but yep. I've taken one of the poses and I just started kind of using it. I just basically drew the pose. Yeah. And now, now I'm kind of just embellishing it with stuff from these reference images. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how this is going to go. It's it's pretty bad. Uh, so we may have to like, just keep uh, working on it after that while we continue talking about talking. Yeah. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, we'll, well, we'll, we'll, have, we'll, we'll take a look at each other's work at the, at, at yeah. the timer. I'm hoping that just the, the process is going to be more interesting than anything else. Right. <laughs> we'll like, see. For my but sub as well. Yeah, option, option paralysis, coming up with a calendar, that is, all, that is all really good stuff. I think for me, the most I can handle is coming up with a daily, yep. a daily limit. Mm -hmm. I can't handle any more than that. Like if you ask me to plan out, you know, okay, I'm going to go skateboarding today and the day after tomorrow and the day after that. Right. It'll only be three days of the week. I'll be like, what? <laughs> but what if I, what if I like, don't feel like 
making YouTube videos that day, and I just feel like going skating. Like I want, well, I want the freedom. And then you just gotta force yourself to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because if if I if I just let myself have the freedom, I I, I might just play Skyrim every day. You know, for. Uh, 10 yeah, hours that's straight, the thing, you know? especially with games. It's hard yep. to, it's hard to know because games also keep begging us to come back. Right. And they have no respect for whether we have anything to do outside of the game. Yep, and t games are becoming more and more ongoing experiences that don't have endings, right? Yeah, and especially with Pokemon Go. Well, not yep. to always come back to Pokemon Go. Yep. But Pokemon Go is now, you know, it's a game that says, well, if you don't get your phone out right now, right. you're not going to get this Pokemon at all. Whereas right. in the past, it didn't matter where you were. Like, you, okay, there are sometimes events that are time-based. Yep. But I don't know of a game which has actually said, no, literally, if you are not going to play this game while you stand here, yeah. you can't have it at all. Right. It's like, whoa, calm down. <laughs> yeah, the other day I was jogging home and I had no plans on playing Pokemon Go at all, but then there was a couple Japanese kids like in the street and they were like yelling, Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was Did like, oh trigger? crap, they found Pikachu? And then I, I logged on to Pokemon <laughs> Go and I looked around and I was like, there's no Pikachu around. Oh, kids. No. <laughs> oh no, they trolled you. <laughs> yep, I was trolled by some kids. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you just missed it, just barely. Yeah, that, that's, that also is possible. It's more likely. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I think, I think I'm all for innovation in gaming, but... I, I do realize that our our society as a whole is not prepared for it mm -hmm. and that is going to have repercussions definitely mm -hmm. people who did not people who have grown up not knowing a world outside of these distractions yeah. are going to be the ones who are most strongly subject to the effects of it oh no that was the timer sure yeah I think that, that was, was just it my, my, I think that was, that just was my, the timer my, okay. and I think I think <laughs> I think this might be the stupidest thing I've ever drawn in my whole life. <laughs> uh, are you ready? Uh, yeah. I guess well, ready, it's kind of like ready or not, here I come, right? Yep, okay, so let me... Uh, okay, we're turning on our webcams now so that the other person can see what we've done. Oh, yours actually looks pretty good. Does it? What? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I literally just went straight from that pose. And then I took an idea that I was coming up with actually earlier, before the, yep. the, the challenge even started. So I kind of cheated. People, people watching this video will know that the head buns yep. came up with the idea. Whoa, yours is so much more inventive. Yeah, but it's not done. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I like it though. It's like five I wish hours I away from being done. I wish I had drawn a. I wish I had drawn a thing now. Yeah. By the way, I should also point out that I have never, I have never drawn from reference before. In your life? I'm, yeah, I mean, no, I've done gesture drawing. Yep. You know, I've practiced a lot with gesture drawing, but I haven't, I haven't actually tried to come up with something new based on a reference. Mm -hmm. So this experience has been quite new for me, which probably explains why I copied that, the the punching person so, so directly. Yeah, to kind of have a simple point of uh, starting, a simple yeah. starting point, I guess. Right. Well, okay. How about this? How about let me run you through mine first. All right. As you can see, I took the punching pose. Yes. Pretty, pretty literally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I think my angle, I changed the angle a little bit, but apart from that, it's pretty much the exact same pose. Yep, looks like and, it. And then I, I was a bit too lazy to come up with a costume, so I just made it like a leotard, which is basically a naked person, with which the, is <laughs> yeah, with lines sort of wearing clothes, with the, lines, yeah. yeah. That was the lazy, my lazy attempt at clothing this character. Yep. And then I think I can't remember what I did next. I think I gave them a cape, but I don't think the cape comes from the reference images. I, I think that was just another the lazy. It does kind of seem reminiscent of the ladybug. Oh yeah, that's definitely kind of a wing thing going on. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that if you're if you're willing to give it to me. Yep. And then the raspberries, obviously. Yep. Are her her head accessory. Yep, that's pretty good. I actually did not intend to make this character a Twin Tails character because last time I made them Twin Tails as well. Right. But then after I gave them the head buns, I thought, well, what what are the buns for if they're not for tying up the hair? Mm -hmm. So I kind of cornered myself there and forced her to have, yeah, Twin Tails. Even though actually this time I really didn't want to. And... It works for the most part. 
Yeah, and then finally the oh, you feet. Got the tiger. Yes, I gave her tiger feet, and this is actually I'll tell you why I did it like this. Yeah, I've been I watched the first episode of the Thundercats anime. Yeah. Oh, is there I, a new one, or, or is it yeah, the Yeah, no, like, one? Thundercats from the 80s was redone yeah. as an anime, and I never watched it. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, I so I finally, I finally got a chance to watch it, and it's actually been done by a Japanese studio, so it's it's quite Japanese in style. It mm. looks very Japanese. Mm. Uh, and I was ready to dislike it, but actually the first episode, I was quite impressed. Mm. It's actually pretty good. So this this tiger thing going here is my... My th- ode thunder, to Thundercats. Thunder, 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 cats. Thunder, thunder, cats. Yeah. My favorite bit is Thundercats. Ho. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I. That was my favorite show as a kid. I would run around with a sword, point it at people, and then say ho. <laughs> how, how, nice. how awful was that? <laughs> yeah. So, run me through your picture. Hey, so let's see. Um. Well, so I changed my mind about three times while drawing it, so okay. I was kind of making it up as I go along. Okay. Um, I feel like I didn't quite succeed in getting an actual creature to work out, but uh, so started off thinking like maybe I'll have like a dragon of some sort, but uh, I wanted the dragon to have the uh, the ladybug wings. So okay. I took those ladybug wings and I started off with those, putting them out here. Okay. And I was gonna have the knight uh, from down here oh. um, as a reference material to have a person Writing. Yeah, he's come out really well. Um, I spent a little bit of time messing with it while you were talking, unfortunately. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Cheater. But, yeah. <laughs> no, but he totally looks like there's gravity there. He looks like he is actually sitting on the thing, which is really good. Mm-hmm. And then, so, um, then I, I was trying to make it sort of like a dragon or some type of mythical beast of some sort. But uh, because mm. I had the, uh, the ladybug thing going on, I started putting in these, these wasp uh, legs and stuff. <laughs> And then I originally had planned to give it like a head that was a, either the iguana head or the uh, the lion head, but uh. Uh, those elements weren't really mixing very well with the with with the uh, wasp part. So yeah. that's what makes it kind of uh, um, I don't know. I'm not very happy with the way the the back part seems like a completely different animal than the front part. So I, I might see. try to like you know unify that a little bit more, but. Uh, <laughs> Like maybe if I could just cut off the back and just make it like. Uh, no, well, I mean, I, I I wouldn't worry about it. So like, like that much. maybe, maybe yeah, that might be a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, so people can just imagine what goes on behind her. <laughs> right. So cheating. <laughs> yeah. I I'll tell you what. Actually, I don't know if you've done this on purpose. But yeah. The way that you've started modeling in the shape of the skull. Oh, so that on the I was, tiger. I, I was actually. That, Intentional to make it look a little mechanical. I actually halfway just through decided I wanted to do uh, mecha. Yeah. Because I didn't like that it w- how it was, I didn't think it looked like an actual creature. Mm. But then I started doing the mecha and I didn't like it, so I changed my mind again and I was gonna erase it and go nor- like regular dragon again. Uh, okay. I totally like the mecha thing only because uh, especially because yep. of Thundercats. <laughs> right, maybe I maybe I could try to make it mecha. Not to bring everything back to Thundercats, but you remember? Do you remember in the original Thundercats they have the Thundercats yep. layer? Yep. And it's it's basically a giant cat. Mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine if humans built buildings that in the same way that Thundercats did? I think life would be a lot more fun. <laughs> it would be more fun, but we'd have these giant human-shaped buildings that we walked around <laughs> inside. It would be terrible. Oh, I thought they were st- they were gonna be the shape of cats. Okay, never well, mind. Well, no, well, their main their main base, Thun- Thundercats base, or th- yeah, not I can't remember what they call it, but uh, yeah, it's basically a giant puma or something. <laughs> <laughs> And they just and and even their car, their car has Thundercat claws and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember the car. That was pretty yeah, cool. the car was amazing. All right, so I think we may need to end the podcast there because I'm running out of time. Okay. But uh, yes. this has been a really interesting challenge. Yeah. And oh. I think if I were to do this again, mm-hmm. I would probably try to be a little bit more inventive with my with my person. I think. I think my mistake was was copying one image too completely. Right. And by completing completing a human body, I was I had no freedom to like stick it to the bottom half of a tiger or something, which would have been more interesting. I would have now now I can see where I would have done it. Right. Like that, that from the from from the from the legs onwards, this could have been like the front half of a of a tiger body or something, which could have been so cool. Centaur, or Minotaur like, style. Right. Yeah, 
I was that's something I was trying to hint at with the saying that making it a, as a reference, but not that you're drawing the image. Yeah. But uh, it was kind of it's kind of a difficult thing to to, to explain. But uh, yeah, it was a yeah. little yeah. Well, it's okay. This is my my first attempt, and I I feel yeah. like you know. Yeah, I actually like yours better than mine. Uh, I think yours no is more complete I like yours better as, than a, mine, as an image. Mine is kind of still kind of up in the air about what exactly is this. <laughs> this has been a really educational experience for me though and uh, yeah. now that i'm looking at yours i'm f i'm like completely learning ways to use reference images without mimicking mimicking too much right and all uh, that just before we end that was another main reason why i wanted to do this is because um when when i do when i've when i've done illustrations professionally i i almost always use reference and um ah. when i do use reference it's very much like this where i get a collection of a lot of things that aren't necessarily always related. So say if I was going to draw, I don't know, we'll just say a dragon. Um, yeah. I, I would, I would, I would obviously get some, some drag, some ideas of cool dragons that I like, but I also just get things that are completely unrelated, like say cats or, uh. Uh, or iguanas or frogs or any, or anything that's kind of, that I could see some relation to, but not exactly that it is a dragon because that way you have a ref, it makes it so you have a reference that you're not going to just copy um, stroke for stroke because if right, you're going to yeah. make if you're going to make a, a cat into a dragon, it's already not going to be the same as the reference material, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. That's a that's really great advice, and hopefully everyone listening at home can use this the same advice and try to avoid the mistake that I made, which was basically to copy one image too early. Perhaps maybe force yourself to combine a few things together. At, although, a, at a sort of an earlier stage. Although I wouldn't necessarily call yours a mistake, because I think uh, <laughs> a pose is generally something that you are going to copy more or less as it is, and then add to that. Um, yeah. A pose is kind of like your main skeleton, if, if, especially if you're doing a character design. So oh, I, yeah, I, I, guess, I wouldn't say that's yeah. necessarily a mistake. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. I kind of wish I had drawn your thing, though. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it and going, I totally want to spend yeah. the rest of my evening drawing Thundercats. <laughs> well, and the grass I don't know. The grass always looks greener on the other side, eh? It, it does, it does. Yeah. Well, Wolf, it has been a pleasure as always. Thank you very much. For this me as has well. been another fun challenge. You, you introduced me to the previous challenge as well, the whole drawing for 20 minutes thing <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a topic. So this has been good fun. Everyone at home, do comment and let us know what you thought. Maybe if you were drawing as well, you could even let us know what yeah. you drew using the same reference images that we had. Hopefully it will turn into a fun, useful exercise for you as well. Any other remarks, Wolf? Uh, no. I'm going to go and watch Thundercats. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my task for the rest of the evening and, and eat dinner. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links to this video to anyone who might be interested, and don't forget to subscribe to Yazuku Wolf's channel as well. He's got some really awesome tutorials and some very detailed stuff on manga tools, especially analog stuff as well. And we will see you in the next podcast. Bye. Bye.